Hello, hello, everybody. It is the second reading for today. I hope everyone's doing well. While I'm doing the shuffling, I just want to let you guys know if you're watching on YouTube, then the timestamps are already available in the description box. And hello if you're watching live on Facebook. Okay, so don't forget this is going to apply to your sun, moon, and rising signs. We have the um, the eclipse in Aquarius and full moon on the 27th. So that is what I'm going to be reading for today. And I know some of you have already been feeling it. And so it's, it's just going to be one of those times when you want to um, see what's going on in your chart, where it's happening. Also, if you're wondering, where do I look to see where this eclipse is happening? You just want to go to your natal chart and look at where Aquarius is. It's the two, like, zigzags on top of each other. I got a question about that, so I just wanted to remind you all of where it's happening. Hello, Linda. Hello, Diana. Hello, everyone who is hopping on. Hello, Joanne, Kristen. <clears throat> and then in the comment section, let me know what is your sun, moon, and rising. I always love hearing, hearing what they are. I know a lot of Pisces watch my show. Um, if you don't know, I'm answering a question in the comments if um, anyone's wondering. Um, if you don't know your birth time, then the only thing that isn't going to be quite right is the, the rising sign. So I just set it for 12 p.m. usually. In that, in that case, if you don't know it. Otherwise, you, um, you can go to astro-charts.com. That's my favorite site. And more than likely, your moon will be accurate, but I mean, there is a bracket of time when it, when it shifts, so. Hello, hello to everybody. Go ahead, feel into your body. If there's anything that you want to come up or if you know what you want to do, for this full moon and the eclipse, if you know what you want to release, if there's anything like that coming up, you can set your intention for the reading. Okay. I know there are people still hopping on. And once I post this to YouTube, I'll have all of the timestamps and everything figured out. So those will already be posted on Facebook if you're watching the replay later on. Negative thinking, that's what you're letting go of? Okay. Yeah, that, that's a good one, especially with the Aquarius energy. It's a good time to look at what are you thinking about. Okay, so first up, you guys know I like to start with the sign that the astrological event is happening in. So we're starting with Aquarius today. So hello to all of my Aquarian friends. And the first thing coming up, the truth bomb for you is dedicate your day to someone. Okay, so this is really being intentional with your time being intentional with your space. And remember, it doesn't mean giving your energy away. It can also mean dedicating your day to yourself, having a you day, right? So that is everything that is coming up for you right now is kind of what's going to be expressed on the day of the eclipse. Okay, let's see what else is showing up for you. We have the Nine of Swords, fear. This is just fear, and it's a very normal thing. It's a human experience to have, so it's one of those things that you kind of want to just look at as an experience that you're having, but it's best if you can figure out a way to look at it as something that is um, 
that might exist within you, but it doesn't have to, right? So it's about like shifting and navigating it. But I, I think the actual eclipse is going to be really intense. Okay, so get your community, get your support, get your toolkit, like what I was talking about earlier. We are on Aquarius. Um, and so if you just get your you know, get get your tools together and this isn't going to be so bad. It's going to shift. Remember that it's a, a window of time when the intensity is coming up, but it is not permanent. So just remember, it's not permanent. It's going to shift. It's going to evolve. It's going to change. So you don't have to sit in this. And then we also have king of pentacles so any way that you can stay grounded also hanging out with earth friends right taurus capricorn virgo friends are going to be really helpful for you at this time so don't forget that that is absolutely something that you can use to your advantage during this eclipse All right, and then Pisces. Hello to all of my Pisces friends. Let's see what's coming up for you. We all require heaping doses of tenderness. <laughs> That's a Pisces card if I've ever seen it. So being extra, extra, extra gentle with yourself is going to be the best course of action if you have um, a lot of Pisces placements in, to begin with. So it's definitely a time to be gentle with yourself, be soft, don't, do your best not to be hard on yourself and that is all, like that's the core tool for what you need to get through the eclipse. Okay, and then we also have two of swords, not knowing, so feeling kind of, um, it, it might make you feel like you're on edge a little bit, like you don't know for sure what's coming up next. There's not a whole lot of certainty as to how it's going to play out, but just remember, it's going to pass. Like, the, if there's one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, all of you, about this eclipse is that it's going to shift. So anything that is coming up during this full moon is not going to stay forever. It's it's a feeling that is going to waver at some point. It's going to move, it's going to transform. So just keep reminding yourself of that if you're having a particularly challenging time. And then we also have the Eight of Wands. So that forward movement, it's kind of like the uncertainty, kind of slowing down a little bit for that, you know, this eclipse, and then it's going to help you propel forward into whatever it is that you're looking to um, get next okay it's just the actual the actual day of the eclipse is what's going to be really intense so don't don't judge yourself on that day all right Aries sun moon and rising disappointments can be openings all right. <laughs> Not, I know that there's a lot of Aries that are like, ugh, no, why did she have to pull that card? Um, but it's true. It's true. When when something is not going your way, when something is not panning out, it means that there is something better, something bigger, something greater that is making its way to you. So don't get bogged down or fixated on disappointments. Um, it's something that is going to um, create an opening for something better. And then we have Four of Rods. Spend some time at home. If you've been feeling like you've been extra busy or burning the candle at both ends or anything to that effect, then spend some time at home. It's going to be useful. So just kind of direct your attention towards what's going on at home uh, without focusing so much on the external. And I think that's going to help keep you grounded through this moon. And then we also have the Knight of Swords. So it's like you're not you're not going to be lacking energy. It's just about where you're, um, where are you putting it? 
what are you doing with the energy if you feel like you or it's like a lot of it might be pent up it's not actually something that's like yeah let's let's get a whole bunch of stuff done it might just be frustration or or pent up emotions but that's going to it's going to move it's going to wiggle around but i think that if you focus on the home that's going to make it a lot easier on the body okay taurus sun moon and rising hello hello to all of my taurus friends First thing coming up for you is soften. All right, this is all about being, it's so funny that I picked this deck for this moon in eclipse. It really is about slowing down and not being so rigid in, in the criticism and the way that you're thinking about situations. It's about opening up your mind to what else is possible, perhaps a perspective that you haven't seen yet. Um, it's, it's really about um, also softening not your boundaries, but rigid thinking. That's what this moon is going to help you to do. And then we have the three of rods, looking at what's next, looking at what's on the horizon, looking at all of the different things that could happen. So remember that even though uncertainty can be really frustrating or not being able to see around every corner, but that leaves a lot of opportunity for miracles as well. So it's all about where are you putting your focus, right? And that's why your rigid thinking around the way that it has to be is what needs to soften or loosen up so that you can leave space for all of that good stuff coming in. And then we also have the King of Wands. A fiery time for you. Okay, so this could be a friend, it could be um, a supporter, it could be a partner. Whoever, whoever this character is, it just looks like they're, they're on your side, like they're there to hold space for you. So let them. It's a good time to do that. That's going to help with the uh, rigid thinking as well. That's what this is coming across as for Taurus. All right, Gemini. Hello, hello to you. All right, first thing coming up. Your body is a miracle. I really like this card. I was actually listening to one of my favorite podcasts, which is Terry Cole. She's awesome. And um, she was talking about like body love. And it's not it's not like a part of the the whole body positivity movement. It was kind of outside of that zone. But she was just talking about showing appreciation for your body through thinking about things like all of the work that's happening within each cell, within each mitochondria, within each each and everything that's going on inside your body all at the same time. That's what's giving, um, like that is in essence a miracle. So just showing appreciation for the small things that your body does. And then we have the strength card, personal power. You might be feeling like this eclipse is a little bit easier. If you have a lot of Gemini placements, I think you guys are going to get quite a bit of a break during this um, full moon and eclipse. And then we also have five of pentacles. It's not without reflection. It's not without you know, thinking about what it is that isn't right or, or isn't working, but that's not the focus. It's kind of like this strength card is propping you up, okay? So this is something that's going to um, come and go. You might be feeling it. Sometimes um, I know a lot of people have like a peak around you know, like maybe the day before the eclipse or the day after. So it's going to be a little bit more fluid for everybody. But this is this is just a reflection piece that you have with this overall tone of the eclipse. Okay. And then Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Let's see what's going on for you. First thing for cancer, sometimes the most enlightened response is fuck off. <laughs> and this is one of those things that might be really hard for you if you're a cancer. I know so many cancers that are um, really, really giving 
and not wanting to engage in this, which is more on on the side of confrontational or you know setting a really, really firm boundary. I know that can be really challenging for cancers a lot of the time. Um, so I would just recommend considering it. Totally, totally consider this. It's a viable option. Um, and so it's kind of like if, if that's what you're feeling and that's what you want to do in that situation, it's, you know, don't rule it out altogether. So I just see this as something worth considering. Like, have you ever thought about just setting a firm boundary or um, challenging your knee-jerk response, which might be to not set boundaries or cave or... Um, you know, sacrifice your own boundaries for the sake of pleasing someone else. Like just, this also is another card that's about reflection, right? So sometimes it is about setting a wicked firm boundary. And then we also have the 10 of pentacles. So this is how you're building a foundation within your home, within your life, within your career. It's all those feelings of, where foundation is happening for you and the this is really interesting because this is actually the opposite of of aquarian energy so aquarians aren't really about foundation they're about disruption innovation forward movement a lack of attachment and so this could actually be um, reflecting back to you what parts of your life are unstable, what parts of your life do need some innovation. And so that that's really what's being highlighted because it's amplifying the opposite end of the spectrum, essentially. And then we also have the star, you're going where you're needed. So I know a lot of people are concerned with, am I on the right path? And in reality, there is no wrong path. You're not, you're not like derailed or on some path that you're not meant to be on. It's, it, you decide. You get to give your life purpose. You get to decide what it is that's right for you. So remember that things are working out for you behind the scenes. But at the end of the day, you have agency over your decisions and over your life. All right, Leos, this is for you. Okay, so first thing, over-controlling will make you brittle. Ah, I like this. Um, so it's funny because, you know, Leos are a fixed sign. And it's one of those things that you might find yourself during this time being really, again, with the rigidity. It, it's about that, that fixation or wanting things to be a particular way. And it might be causing a lot of um, stagnation energetically. It's like if you're holding on so tight to one thing, then it kind of blocks the flow of everything else. So be open to loosening your, your grip and be open to, um, you know, challenging yourself to not be so locked into one way of thinking or one expectation or one outcome. Okay, let's see what else is going on. We have the devil. Okay, so this is not surprising. It's probably going to hit, um, Leo's might actually have the most challenging time during this eclipse. We'll see. I'm not, I'm obviously not done with the reading, but it's one of those things that you're going to have the, the shadow self is what's coming to the forefront during this eclipse. It kind of wants you to sneak a peek and, and kind of purge part of that, um, hedonistic side of yourself like that's the part that's healing and the five of cups disappointment not i it might be disappointment with yourself it might be um this right here the over controlling aspect wanting things to be a certain way um to the point where it's actually the expectations are a part of what's contributing to you feeling brittle or or crumbling in some way like what at at the point of any disappointment that comes through it might make you feel like your world is falling apart that's a very leo leo 
way of viewing the world um, in a lot of ways is that like hyper or that, that extreme version of, oh no, things are falling apart. And so it's, it's just about remembering it's temporary. You don't have to hold on so tight to the way that things should be. Because as things are in transition and as you're growing, they're going to get better. So if you can put more stock in the things that are getting better, it's going to help you loosen up on that. All right, Virgo, sun, moon, and rising. Your self-expression is a great service to the world. Okay, and Virgos are all about service, so no surprise seeing this. It's just about remembering that this time, especially during Leo season overall, it's going to be a really great exercise for you to be seen. I know that that can be really hard for Virgos, but it's something that we need more of from you. And then we have the Hierophant. Structure, order very you. And then seeing where this is showing up in your life, what what areas are being disrupted? What what feels chaotic to you? If you have strong Virgo placements, if you're a Virgo sun moon or rising, what is it that that's feeling out of whack? And that's the point where you can actually see some healing happening, especially with this eclipse and everything that's coming up. The Aquarius, like I said earlier, it's the disruptor, it's the innovator. So that's where you can really see what is it that needs more structure. Okay, and then we also have Ten of Swords letting go of what doesn't work. Because with this, it means that you're going to have to say goodbye to whatever it is. Maybe there's something about your schedule that isn't working. Maybe it's an activity that you're doing that is just draining and you know, disappointing in some way. Whatever the case may be, as you say yes to structure in some way or healing in some way, you're saying no to something else. And this, the Hierophant is the yes and the Ten of Swords is the no. So remember that it's the contrast between what you're doing that's working and what you're letting go of that really isn't serving you anymore. Okay, Libra, sun, moon, and rising. Let's see what's coming through first. Laying on the floor and listening to music might be all the therapy that you need. So this is actually stepping away from over-intellectualizing, over-working, um, oh, I don't know why I put this here, um, like being overly stimulated. You know, you don't have to listen to every drop of personal development under the sun. You don't have to buy every program or go to every service or, you know, it's like you can take breaks. Sometimes you can just relax and, and loosen up a little bit and just step away from self-judgment and be present with yourself. That can be equally as healing as going to... um you know, it can be equally as, as therapeutic as um, doing the work part, right? So it's it's about balance, and I know that that's what you guys really strive for. So it's just about remembering that you don't have to be in constant go, go, go with the healing. It's good to take breaks. We have the Wheel of Fortune. Let me pull this one before I speak to that. We have the Hierophant as well. So kind of um, maybe this is the part that's out of balance. Maybe you have so much stuff crowding um, whatever it is that's going on in your life. Maybe you have too many rigid commitments that are actually blocking the possibility of, of something better coming in or a better opportunity or, or more fun in your life. So it's just about kind of where are you at? Do you can either support your body by incorporating structure if you feel out of balance there, or this is something where there's an overwhelming amount of structure and you need to break that down so that you can actually breathe into your expansion. It's just about whatever it is that you feel like needs a little bit more, um, it needs to 
be equalized or neutralized, so to speak. So whichever side you're on there, just remember that um, this is this is about get you know there can be too much of a good thing. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Hello, hello to all of my Scorpio friends. Okay, first thing, broadcast your essence. So this is a time to shine for you. This is a time that you're, that you're really being seen, that you're being witnessed. And similar to, um, to Virgo, it's also about expression. It's about broadcasting. It's about communicating this. If you hide everything, then you can't really be seen. It's going to be harder for opportunities, people, relationships to find you. So make sure that you're getting out there as much as possible. And then we also have the Queen of Cups. This is a moody queen. So remember that during this eclipse you might find that you're feeling really moody or uh, um, that your emotions are a little bit unstable. It might be, you know, crying one minute, angry the next, and then feeling cool about it. So just go with the flow. Don't, don't read too much into it. A lot of this is just going to be the eclipse. So I think that this is showing up as like, okay, if you need time and space to cry, leave time and space to cry. That is totally okay. And then we also have the chariot. So remember that even if you're taking a break, even if you're feeling moody, moody excuse me, um, this is what's propelling you forward. Again, and this applies to everyone, no matter your placements, this is a time that is necessary in order for you to get to where you want to go. So use this eclipse energy, even if it means purging emotions or expressing yourself or getting angry, you know, don't take it out on, on people, but just allowing yourself to sit with the emotions that are coming up and whatever's being unearthed is happening for you, okay? It, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. All right, and so that's going to help push you forward naturally if you just let yourself be in that space. All right, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. Thank you, Christine. I really appreciate that. That's really sweet of you. Okay, Sagittarius, the journey to sovereignty is usually pretty messy. <laughs> okay, so remember that as you're working through this, it's not going to be neat and clean and easy. It can actually be a hot mess sometimes. And so again, stepping away from the judgment aspect is one of the best things that you can do. Um, and it's be okay with it being messy. Be okay with trial and error. You know, you get one shot in this lifetime with this specific earth body, you get one. So it's okay to make the most of it. It's okay to fumble around a little bit. You're not going to get it perfectly, but it's better to take risks and risk having um, something really great come in rather than to not risk anything at all. And then we have the Queen of Swords, independent thinking. It's okay if you have unconventional ideas. I would say write them down. You know, get a notebook out, get paper out, and just start jotting down whatever it is that's coming up for you because that is kind of giving you a blueprint for what it is that's coming up and what you need to do next. And then we also have the Page of Cups. So this actually looks like thoughtfulness to me. Like the the parts of you that are going to be a little bit more introspective, you might find that, that you're remembering things that haven't come up in a really long time or that you're having um, strange feelings or you might be uh, feeling a certain way about a situation that hasn't come up since you were like a teenager. I notice that a lot of the time those parts of yourself that may have been buried are kind of like coming to the surface for contemplation. And so that is also what's contributing to um, your healing, your getting better, and you getting the most out of this life. 
All right, last but not least, we have Capricorn. Hello, hello to you, all of my Capricorn friends. This is good if you're Sun, Moon, or Rising Capricorn. First thing, Rebel. Okay, not this is not exactly what I would expect from a Capricorn, but that's kind of the Aquarius, uh, that's in the nature of Aquarius uh, energy is to be a rebel again, again. I said it once, I'll say it again. It's all about unearthing, challenging the status quo, innovation, breaking down all of the old ways of being and shifting into a new paradigm. So let's see what else is coming up for you. We have the Five of Swords. You are being pushed to let go of the things that aren't working, but you have to actively walk away. I want to be very clear that there are rarely situations where it's just going to happen that if you ask for something to be done for you, that it's just going to be released. It happens sometimes, but a lot of the time, the lesson is in you making an active decision to release what no longer serves you. It doesn't always get just, you know, kind of easily and effortlessly taken away or, or shift out of your life. So it's it, that would be really nice, but a lot of the time you have to pick up your things and walk away. And then we have the Nine of Pentacles. So make sure that you are showing gratitude for the things that you do have, the things that are coming up for you. That's going to give you a lot of, what should I say for this? It's, it's like you might be focusing on the wrong things. You might be focusing on, on old baggage or, or things that are really not working out for you and so your attention might be displaced when really you need to focus on what you have now what whatever it is that is working this just looks like a a shift in focus and remembering that obligation and doing things in relationships out of feeling like you have to is not always the best course of action you know, it might not be working for you and it might make you feel really rebellious. It might make you feel like a rule breaker. It might make you feel uncomfortable. But that is something that you have to step into to get the things that you want and you have to challenge yourself in order to move forward, okay? So that's what is going to be highlighted to you during this um, full moon. All right, so that is all that I have for everybody today. I hope you've enjoyed this reading as much as I've enjoyed reading for you. And don't forget, I've been getting flooded with messages and um, comments and things like that and emails about uh, services with me. You can go to onyxhealing.com. All of my services are listed out there if you want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And until next time, don't forget, check out the... Um, I've already posted it on Facebook and YouTube. It is the weekly reading and then we also have the uh, Mercury Retrograde in Leo video that I did. It's the same thing, sign specific. So make sure you check that out as well if you haven't already. And I will talk to all of you later. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.